Arts and Leisure. Members question 10 and 13 have been withdrawn and we begin with the topical questions. And I call Mr Craig. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. As the Minister will well know, um, Lisburn got the accolade of European City of Sport this year and we are rightfully proud of all the sporting organisations within the city. Could the Minister outline what additional support is planned for some of those sporting organisations within the city this year? Um, I thank the member for his question. Um, certainly in relation to there is currently a bid process uh, saying the Lisburn Rackets Club receive additional money. There has been additional money uh, for Salt Hill Gym through the governing body for gymnastics. Uh, I have had approaches and certainly be looking at opportunities around soccer and boxing and other sports as well. Um, and just to say to the, the member, I mean certainly uh, attracting the Chinese male gymnast team first ranked first in the world to Lisbon is no mean feat. I have absolutely no doubt that Lisbon will be banking on that in order to attract additional investment in the future. Well, Mr Jonathan Craig for supplement. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for that answer. Um, with regard to Salto, um, it is recognised that they pulled off, I suppose, what is one of the key achievements in the Olympic Games, and that is getting the uh, Chinese gymnasts there. Now, unfortunately, Salto is a victim of its own success, and it is bursting at the seams and has plans to develop that uh, facility further. Will the Minister and her department be supportive of that extension, which can only benefit all the people of Northern Ireland further than Lisburn itself? Thank you. I mean, the member is right in saying that the facilities, certainly at Salto, are an exemplar uh, and data across this island when it comes to gymnastics. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd be happy to meet uh, the representative of Salto Gym with the member, and certainly members of Decon Sport NI to look at uh, potential expansion um, of the facilities at Salto. Uh, as yet, there hasn't been any request to do that, but certainly I'm anticipating one, because having been at the gym on several occasions, and it has been uh, flagged up to me that they have a witness that they can't facilitate, uh, and they're not happy to be in that situation, but certainly uh, happy to meet with the member and a delegation from the gym to see what we can do in the future. <coughs> Uh, at the beginning, I informed members that questions 10 and 13 had been withdrawn. That refers, of course, to the world questions. Question 6 has been withdrawn in the topicals. And I move on to Mr Raymond McCartney. Uh, good evening, good. Uh, I'll ask him, Clara, can, I, can I ask the Minister if she would confirm that the, the City of Culture legacy plan will be brought forward this year? And can she further confirm that Derry City Football Club will be included in the uh, AFA sub regional development of stadium? There's certainly a, a local theme of local politics emerging in topical questions, and I appreciate that all politics is local. First of all, uh, I mean we we were very successful in securing an additional two million pounds um, as part of the monitoring rounds for uh, the the City of Culture's legacy uh, fund. It is really important that, particularly when you're looking at the legacy. And there has been much in the media about the legacy, but for us, you know, the entire executive three D call, our focus has always been on addressing opportunities, and there's no better opportunity than you know, tackling poverty and social exclusion. I'm, and I'm happy uh, that that will happen. Um, in terms of uh, other uh, facilities, uh, namely the the Brandywell and the showgrounds and the rest, as part of that legacy. I mean, certainly they'll be included in that. But what I would, would like to see certainly is we're working with the Council on the production of a robust legacy plan. We'll be bringing our own in addition to that. And I've no doubt I'll be hearing right up until the last minute from the people of the city and surrounding communities about what they'd like to see invested. I call Mr McCartney for supplementary, and I would encourage the member to ask only one, one question. question. Well spotted, uh, last concluder. Uh, uh, can, first of all, can I thank the Minister for her answer? Indeed, I'll, I'll ask her one question. We heard this morning, and the Minister has alluded, that the, the Executive has now, through DECAL, uh, ring fenced £2 million for the legacy, uh, legacy proje uh, 
process. Can she confirm today how that will be used and in particular how it will advance the Brandywell and Foyle Valley Master Plan? Valley Master Plan, not just with the two million from DECAL, but certainly with the three million that the Derry City Council has, will certainly put a core dent, as we say in Belfast, into the Foyle Valley Plan and help address one of the legacy projects that have been flagged up in the city. It is really important that we use opportunities through sport and physical activity, through the arts, through community development, mm -hmm. through health, social development and the rest, to make sure that we leave a good footprint. And I believe that the, the Foyle Valley project is one of those and looking forward to seeing heart rolls out in the future. I call Mr David Hildes. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And uh, what well, post a great weekend for, for boxing here in Northern Ireland, Belfast in particular. I'm sure you'll congratulate, obviously, Carl Frampton as he, as he heads on to greater things. But the deadline has recently passed for a tranche of funding that became available for, for local boxing clubs. I uh, just asked the Minister, uh, in her opinion, was there a good uptake or is she content with the uptake of uh, clubs? Um, they're, they're, first of all, I would like to concur with uh, the members. Uh, statement around Carl Frampton and all the other boxers who succeeded at the weekend. I believe the, uh, the, the wins that they all achieved and the support that they have from right across the community is probably unprecedented and it's something that many other sports can learn from. The, the, there was a huge uptake uh, and certainly uh, I haven't got the figures with me at the minute but it will come as no surprise to the member that the, the demand far outweighs the, the funds that we have, so we need to look at ways in which supporting that. But certainly the uptake has been huge. And as a member and other members, I'm sure, who will raise this today will know that the state of facilities and boxing clubs are probably the worst for sports across. <coughs> and we aim to make sure that we're, not only do we invest in making sure that those facilities are fit for purpose, but all others have an opportunity, all other departments and bodies have an opportunity to contribute, and that includes some of the local government. Uh, there have been some councils that have done great work. Other councils are expressing interest. And I'm keen to make sure that this deadline isn't a cut-off uh, for Boxing Forevermore. We just need to see what money we'll have to try and meet the need. Well, Mr Hildes, first supplementary. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and thank the, the Minister for answer so far. Now, now that the deadline's passed and we're, we're in a period of, of assessment, when does the Minister expect to see delivery on the ground? Well, certainly in terms of some of the minor capital equipment, you know, like uh, uh, head guards and bags and things like that. I mean, most of, most of the clubs, if not all, have, would have received those. The assessments, the technical assessments in terms of capital needs, um, I would anticipate by Christmas 2015, December 2015, that work, a lot of the work would, would not only have commenced well underway, but some of which would be near completion. Um, but I am still hopeful that even at this late stage that not only were uh, city councils have boxing clubs and they're either also helping them and maybe contributing some of the funding to look at a better way in which we can have some of these much needed facilities delivered. Call Mr Pat Ramsey for a question. Thank you Deputy Speaker. <clears throat> Could I ask the Minister to outline to the House what process she would envisage going forward that outside the three main sporting bodies that on a sub-regional basis sporting clubs could take advantage of modernisation and improvement programmes? Well, um, certainly, as the member will be aware, that the IFA have uh, the sub-regional uh, facilities and that the, the, they're in the process uh, of looking at a facilities development plan. Um, I mean, that will be completed and will be presented to me, and certainly, you know, based on what's there, I make a final decision at the end. But it is really important to make sure that uh, local clubs, be they small or big, have themselves in a state of readiness. And as a member, will also be aware that not everybody who puts a plan forward will get funded. Mr. Ramsey, for supplement. Yeah, and I thank the minister for her response. Could I then further ask her? Could the minister give this house the fullest assurance that Derry City Football Club will not be disadvantaged by playing the League of Ireland, and they will become part of a funding stream? through this present comprehensive spending review period? Well, I know the member is aware of the response I give to his foil um, colleague, Raymond McCartney, in terms of we've already uh, submitted £2 million to go towards the Daisy Fields and the Showgrounds as part of the overall Foyle Valley programme. Uh, the Derry City Football Club, along with many other football clubs, 
have been and will continue to meet with the IFA to make sure that their facilities are certainly on the list to bring forward for approval. Well, Mr. Cahill Washing for a question. Uh, can the Minister confirm that the NI events investigation is complete, um, when it will be published, and do the Department intend to reinstall any of the events within that? Um, the Member will be aware uh, that the um, events company was transferred to Daddy in April 2010, um, uh, and at the minute there, there is a report to be compiled um, on the findings of that investigation. Uh, basically, uh, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the, the events company has been transferred to Daddy, along with Daddy and the tourist board. Certainly, there's events here that collectively across the executive that we need to look at, but no, no better than this year as an example of what we can do in terms of world stage events. But I would like to see uh, the conclusion of this investigation and the report published. Call Mr. Washington for a supplement. Uh, can the Minister um, also tell me or assure me that uh, those events will happen right across the north uh, rather than just in the two main cities? Um, no, well, what I can do is, um, I mean, certainly, particularly from areas outside of Belfast and, and, and Derry City, that um, a lot of people are concerned that there are events and the potential of events and certainly the impact will have on tourism and indeed the local economy need to be given an opportunity. Uh, what I would say to people who have that concern is there's absolutely nothing stopping people bringing forward projects now. But equally, I'd like to see the uh, publication of the report to make sure that lessons that need to be learned have been learned and opportunities that we collectively need to bring forward that we can do so collectively. As pointed out at the beginning, question six has been withdrawn. Uh, Mr. Declan McAleer is not in his place, Mr. Alex Atwood is not in his place, Mr. Datty Mackay is not in his place, and Mr. Ian McRae is in his place. Indeed, wasn't expecting that, but nonetheless, um, the Minister will be aware that the Northern Ireland Pipe Band scene has had very good results in, in this. Um, um, piping season. Can the Minister comment on, on how she feels that that can further um, be attributed to throughout the next season? I am delighted the member was in his place, um, but he, he asked a very valid question and actually provides something that certainly in terms of pipe bands and some of the pipe bands that I visited and were witness to this year have enjoyed a lot of success and rightly so it hasn't came without a lot of hard work, and I have no doubt that success will be continued next year. And I have absolutely no doubt that our department, even through DECAL Arts Council and the Ulster Scots Agency, will, will play their part in ensuring that that success is realised. That concludes the... Oh, my apologies, Ian. <laughs> you have a supplementary. <laughs> That's the least we... I, I, I think so. Um... <laughs> Will the Minister uh, join with me in congratulating a young fella, um, Matthew Wenlock, who this weekend um, became the world champion in his, um, I think it's the, if I get it correct, it was the um, World um, Solo Drumming Championships, and I think it was his, the under-16 level. So will she join with me in congratulating him? Of course, so I'll join with you in congratulating him. Um, and indeed, you know, the, the, these competitions have not just an opportunity for people to compete, but also to, to excel and actually try and improve on their skills and move from one category to another. Uh, I mean, anybody, and I admire anybody who plays a musical instrument, regardless of they're in a pipe band, marching band, pop band, traditional band, it's, it's absolutely no mean feat. But I would like to extend my congratulations to Matthew and hope to make sure that he and others succeed next year. Members, that concludes topical questions. We may now move on.